is love. First John 4, 8. God is not prayers. God is not signs and wonders. God is love. And in 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 13, the New King James Version, the Bible declares, it says, now by that faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. It is by love the world we know we are his disciples. We are not his disciples because we come to church and carry good Bibles. We are not disciples because we belong to a denomination. We are his disciples when we walk in love. In John 13 and verse 35, it said, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if you love one another. It is when we love one another, the world we know that we are his disciples. But let me say this to you. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8, I will dissect verse 4 more. I will take the amplified version. It says, love endures with patience. Take note of that word. Love endures with what? And serenity. Love is kind and thoughtful and it's not jealous. Love endures with what? Have you ever heard people, even married people say, I've endured this man for too long. I've endured this marriage. He said, you endure with patience. Oh, many endure, but they're not patient. So they miss it. Any love that only endures is not love. He said, love endures with what? So while you're enduring, you have to be patient with the person. I have been patient. Look, I've endured this young man for too long. No, be patient with him. That's what love says. I've endured this woman for too long. I can't take it again. No, you don't understand love. You have only endured, but you're not what? In spite of being patient, he says, sir, it means you have to be calm. In the midst of that, you have to be peaceful. My wife does not know how to cook. Be patient with her. At that time, you don't need to shout. You need to be calm. That's what serenity means. You need to be peaceful. You're calm. And you're not fidgeting, shouting everywhere. And so you are still kind to the person. While you are patient, you are still kind. In the process of being patient, you are what? You are still kind. Many endure, but they are not patient and they are not kind. They say, well, I'm not going to give her pocket money anymore. I'm not going to cook for him anymore. No, you keep cooking. You have to be patient with him. And you get what I'm saying? This man is just, I don't understand him. I've endured this marriage. You don't know. We endure, but the Bible said with what? Patience. And the patience is also good with what? Kindness. All the complaints of life, the other two are missing. They are not patient, and they are not kind. They only what? Endured. And that is not true love. So I hear. Are you getting what I'm saying? God loves, and that is his nature. So to partake of his nature, you must also love. You must also what? His love is impacted into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, Romans 5.5. 5. He said, and hope make it not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost which is given to us. So you already have love inside you. All you need to do is to give love what? Expression. Now let me say this to you. I'm teaching the greatest secret of my life. Great what? I want somebody with physical pain. You have pain. Pain, terrible, terrible pain. Get up. You have pain. I mean pain that is paining you deep down inside of you. Who is the person? Anyone with pain? Come. You have terrible pain. Come, you man. Come. Just come. I'm just going to demonstrate what love is. Sit here. Sit down there. Just sit. Get up. Let this sit where it's at. Get up. The pain is still with you? You see how the pain? Huh? You're sure? Press it. No pain? Press where you had the pain. No pain. Is, is that David Biobian? No, wait, I come. 
No pain. You know why? When you walk in love, you carry God. First John 4, 16. He has heard my teachings. When a man walks in love, he walks in God. And when we walk in God, God just uses you as a vessel. You know, I did not sit down. If I'm sitting, they say, well, he's an anointed man of God. So I have to use somebody who has heard my teaching over and over. A man who walks in love, you are an embodiment of his personality. Now, look at it. First John 4, 16. That's where I'm coming from. For we know that we believe, are you going to be part? God is love. And he that dwelleth in love, dwelleth in God, and God in him. So when he sat down, God sat down there. Do you understand it? The moment he sat, God sat. So when she sat where he sat, God went through his own power and hit her. When you walk in love, you don't beg for miracles. You become a miracle yourself. Sit where he sat, you'll be healed too. And if you walk in love, you won't have the pain. Do you hear me? So walk in love, you won't have pain. <laughs> walk what? In love. I have to use it because if, I, if, if it's me, you say, well, it's me. No, you don't know what you're missing walking in bitterness and hatred. Am I the one who sat there? Because if I do the work, you say, yeah, there's Papa now. Every lover of God, God does not find it difficult to manifest through you. Because God's nature is love. Listen, God is what? First John 4. God is who? Can two walk together except they were agreed? It must be three. Can two other? So, if I don't walk in love, I repel God. Because his nature is love. So, the moment I don't walk in, in love, I repel him. But when I walk in love, I attract him because that is his what? Nature. So, the moment I walk in love, I'm walking in the nature of God. And God's nature is the miraculous nature. Is the signs and wonders nature. Is, so, everything about God just flows through me without sweat. So here. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So when you walk in love, you don't beg for miracles. Miracles just what? I don't, I don't beg anywhere I go, miracles happen. I don't please listen. Listen. Is anybody sick here? Anybody sick here? Anybody sick here? Any of you sick here? You have pain? You have pains? Look at my face, you'll be healed. Don't get up. Look at my face. Don't, don't pray. Don't look at my face. Just put your eyes on my face, you'll be healed. Put your eyes on my face. Put your eyes on my face, you'll be healed. Check your sickness. You will surprise the sicknesses will not be in your body. Check your body. Doctors ask them. You know why? When you walk in love, God he stays inside you to manifest. The moment you don't walk in love, he steps out because you are not walking in the nature of God. So here. I may not understand it. So you don't know what you're missing. All this small, small problem you are prone. Somebody do something, you will not go forgive him. I don't go for, I don't forgive him for what? For what all these things they are talking about. I don't understand what they are talking. Hmm? Attributes of God's kind of love for people. Attributes of what? Of God kind of love for people. Attributes of God kind of love for people. Attributes of God kind of love what? For people. Today we are talking about love for people. Love for what? Many know about love of, for God, but they don't love to talk about love for people. Number one attribute is it is not selfish. Love is not what? Love is not selfish. Number one, it is not what? Not selfish. Now look at 1 Corinthians 13 verse 5, the A part, I'll read the Amplified Version. Shall we read it together? It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not what? Don't always seek your own interests. Learn to see the interests of others first. It's a wonderful way to walk in God's kind of love. Most times believers walk in the flesh. It's a walking in the spirit. We always want to please ourselves before others. But God kind of love thinks of pleasing the other person before you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know why marriages suffer? Marriages, everybody wants to please himself before the spouse. Think of pleasing the spouse before you, you will never have crisis in your marriage. 
Love is not self-seeking. means you seek to please the other person. That's God's kind of love. So here. Walking in the flesh makes you selfish. God's kind of love does not insist on its own rights. Hmm? It does not insist on its own rights. You let go. If you want to walk in God's kind of love for people, don't be selfish. Don't be what? Don't be selfish. I am not preaching love. I practice love. Body language can pass a message to you if you love somebody. Are you here? Now, say with me love. Love seek to please people before yourself. That's what love is. But you know, man is so selfish that man always wants to please himself. Even in marriage, even in what? Do you know why there are many problems in marriage? Do you know the reason they, don't, they, won't, they won't tell you? I was talking to some young couples last night. When you see a woman come and say, this man is wicked. They say, any problem? He says, he's very wicked. The man says, I bought a car, I bought a car, everything. He's a wicked man. No, something's wrong. Children are around, so... I was speaking parable. When you see a woman talk like that, you know something is really wrong. He said, that man is so wicked. He said, but he gives you car. He gives you money. He says, I'm telling you, the man is wicked. You go here. You want to know what is wrong? You want to know what is wrong? He's a selfish man. He's a very what? I was speaking very deep idiom. He goes for all himself. Any marriage where the man does not think of satisfying the woman first, you will have crisis. Let her be satisfied before you. You go well. You are doing as if you are holier than me. <laughs> uh, women, am I, am I talking? Okay. But men are so what? Many men are selfish. And the women can't express themselves because if they talk, they say, see this bad woman. So she just bottled it up. She bottled it up. But one day she will just bust. We can man, get out. Get your money and get out. Get out. He said, why are you doing all that? Did we quarrel? This is a reason for the quarrel. When you say quarrel without anything, this is the reason. This is the reason. They will never say it. The women are not exceptional. They're not like men. Men, we can just talk. Women who just look at you, oh, wicked man, look at man. Is it your car we eat? You want to give me a car? Every man, when you, are, when you are there, look at the expression on their face. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God created it for pleasure, not for punishment. If God was not wise, why did he put those things on your body? Are you, only, are you wiser than God? Okay. Number two. You see, you know, church, church, you, you like man and woman, Jesus. I, I discovered that when it comes to man and woman, everybody, everybody's here. Everybody's here like this. If we talk now, love, love, you are crying. When I say man and woman, you, all your ears are like this. Since God created man, man likes this kind of Jesus. See the kind where everybody's realized they keep, some people even keep their Bible from writing. <laughs> All I'm saying is so refuse to be selfish. Both in giving, in everything. You know what I mean. Yeah. If you don't know, find out. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Number two. It pays no attention to evil done to you. Love for people pays no what? Attention to evil done to you. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5, the B path, the Amplified says, it does not take into account a wrong endured. It does not take what? Into account. Are you touchy, resentful, paying attention, and taking account of every little thing done to you? Then you are not walking in love. For every 
every little thing, you, you take note. You are not walking. When you walk in love, you will not notice so many things. Are you, are you now? You will not notice. If you see somebody notice everything, you are not walking in love. When you walk in love, you will not pay attention to so many evil things. If your wife cooked food, she put too much salt, she was trying to please you. If she forgot to put salt, she loved you so much that she forgot. Whichever way, take it like that. After you two you are cooking, when you, sometimes you are fire, the thing got burnt. Have you not been cooking before when you are a bachelor? True? You don't, some of you don't even know how to cook. You don't know how to boil rice. Rice can boil. If you put the rice, you put the rice before you put the water. Then you forget that it's rice. You not take a spoon to turn rice like cooker oat. <laughs> Did you kill yourself? Eh? Okay. That's love. That's what? You are not touching. And number three, love easily forgives. Love easily what? Love easily forgives. First Peter chapter 4 verse 8. It said that above all things have fervent charity among yourselves for charity shall cover the, the multitude of sins. Now look at the amplified classes. Above all things, have intense and unfailing love for one another. For love covers a multitude of sins, forgives and disregards the offenses of others. <laughs> Do you hear that? Mm. Ephesians 4.32 And be a kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake and what? If you find it difficult to forgive, then you are not walking in love. People who walk in love easily forgive. And let me say this. The practice of forgiveness is the hallmark of Christianity. Jesus was once going to a city called Samaria in Luke chapter 9, 51 to 53. And they stopped him from entering Samaria. They stopped him from where? That the disciples said, do we call fire to come down and burn these people? Jesus said, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> now, the same Samaria, where they stopped him from enter, in John chapter 4, you remember when they went to the well, at the Jacob's well, the same Samaria was where the woman brought the whole city. Just imagine if he didn't forgive them, he wouldn't have been able to have a big evangelism. True? Are you hearing what I'm saying? I've gone for evangelism. One of the most fervent people in this church. When I was preaching, he was making noise. He said, oh God, believe us. Believe us. I was preaching. I just looked at him. I said, this, this is not normal. By the time I was, I was finished, he that did not concentrate to was the first person in church the following day. And I picked his face. I said, I don't know what I was disturbed. He said, yes, but you know, after he preached, I went back home and said, what am I even doing with my life? That's very dedicated. So if I didn't forgive her, I said, you go die. You go die. <laughs> Amen. Stop keeping records of people's hits. The reason you have to forgive people is in most times, they don't even know they have wronged you. Hmm? Be a poor record keeper when it comes to forgiveness. In Matthew chapter 18, 21, 22, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Hey, Till seven times, you read together, one to go to the two. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee, until seven times, but what? Until 70 times seven. Can someone offend you? 490 times a day. The one your mother-in-law did you last year. You see your chest. That's your chest is already paying you. <laughs> Let go of past offenses. When you see a person resounding and recounting, counting other people's ears, it's an indication you or she has not understood what it means to walk in love. If God should count your own, are you sure you survive? Learn to forgive. I forgive people in advance. Your parents did not train you. 
Now you are born again. Forgive them. I'm not preaching love. I live love. Small thing, you, you, you can't forgive people. If they are coming this way, you are going this way. That, you know, people who don't forgive other women. May you not offend the woman. <laughs> she will tell you. I told them, I said, every mother in law is a witch. But women's mothers are never witches. It's their mother in <laughs> law. Not everyone will do. I'm very sure you do become a mother in law. So you are the next switch on the line. <laughs> Check very well. If you see a woman calling somebody which is a mother in law, then the brother's wife will call their own mother witch. It's a situation she's insulting my mother that's a witch. You do insulting another man's mother witch. And the witch, mother in law, gave back to your good husband. You are taking egg, you don't want to take the chicken. Thank you. <laughs> Since uh, it's a mother-in-law with a witch, and you have, it's so common in our society. When a woman has a problem, it's a mother-in-law. Not her own mother. Huh? Then the, if she has a brother, the brother's wife will also accuse her own mother. It's a problem everywhere. It's a problem. So the best way is to forgive your mother-in-law, who is also a witch to your husband, good husband. Do you know why women react when you want to marry? Do you know the reason? The reason the woman reacted when your husband wanted to marry is this. When a child is born, if you watch male children, they're always close to their mothers more. And female children are always close to their fathers. Check every family. Most male children, they go tilt towards their mothers. Most female children tilt towards their fathers. Now, she's used to the son talking to her. Constantly, they are close. They've, there's this bond of love. Then all of a sudden, you are stepping, somebody is stepping in to take that love from her. Not because she hates you, she cannot understand why that love is shared with somebody else. So she reacts. My son, you will marry this woman. She doesn't hate you because you two will do it. She's only reacting that, you mean this thing I love will go off from me. So leave it like that. You have married him. You are now born again. Show her love. He said, no. This is my mother in law, wicked woman. No, you can't grow like that. Buy her something. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Your parents did not train you. What do you do? Hmm? So forgive them. Joseph brothers, did you forgive them? If you're in Joseph's shoes, are you sure you forgive them? It's easy to preach, oh. You are in the shoes of Joseph. You will revenge on the spot. You will say, no way, today I will pay you back. Tie people down, you tie down your destiny. Your chest is paining you. Watch what is making your chest to pain you. <laughs> every time your whole, everything they pain you, small thing you go say, I'm not going to forgive him. I mean, forgive him for what? I'm going to forgive him for what? Lie, lie. No, forgive him. If you see what did that boy do me, eh? when he wanted to marry me, he, he went to marry that girl, left me alone. Forgive him now. So I'm going to bring better man. You know why God not allow you to marry you? That man is not the one for you. He's a Congo man. <laughs> the real one is he jilted you because God did not want him to marry you. If God wanted him, he would never leave you. God is blessed make a rich. For him to leave you, he's not the man. There's better one. Now she's not going to forgive him. Me, forgive this man. Lie, 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 lie. I won't forgive him. So for 10 years now, you have been waiting. Every time God wants to answer your prayer, he says, since you hold this fortune in your heart, there will be no fortune in your life. He said, I won't forgive him. Anytime you see the wife, he said, let her die. Let her die. Let her die. Let her fall and die. He left me to go and carry this woman. Let her die. Two of them, they should clash on the way. I'm <laughs> forgive them, Joe. Leave them to go. Are you hearing me now? Forgive them. Oh. It's why you forgive them, God will give you your own. Oh, yeah, forgive people. Oh. If you know how many people. If you say, I get bald head. Now, will you make me get hair? I already have my head now. What, what you go? Anything will change. Even if you are wearing afro now, would you run away, church? <laughs> if I wear afro on the head, wouldn't you come to church and say, Praise the Lord? You say, What is happening? <laughs> you somebody say, I'll forgive you now. Just imagine my head now. What will you do now? I said, will you cut your own and put it on top? Even if you use glue, after one week, would you go off? 
They abuse you, you're stupid. Are you really stupid? Forgive them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Any people who talk about you, do what? I went to Houston, Texas, and they said you can do artificial hair. I looked at the man and I said, what are the side effects if I do this? He said, you'll be weak. I said, weak where? <laughs> he said, why are you asking this kind of question? I said, I'm very curious. I'm somebody who likes asking questions. He said, I'm in, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in this practice. Nobody has asked me this question. I said, because for every medical condition, there's a side effect. If my hair will grow, what are the side effects? He said, you'll be weak. I said, weak where? <laughs> I said, so now we'll get here, come week. I said, carry, carry your hair and go. <laughs> Every drug has side effects. So when you're taking it, also know the causes and follow them. Rest your feet. Will you forgive? How many will walk in love? Will you walk in love? Now, you know what the Bible says? In First John chapter 3 and verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Love cares. Love does what? Love cares. Love does what? Love cares. Love cares. If you love, you will care. You will do what? You care. Love is not just this, I love you. Oh, baby, I love Oh, those are not love. Those are not what? They are lost. That you send text to someone I love you does not mean you love the person. You can even twist your face when you're singing. Oh, I love you. God said you don't love nonsense. Love is caring. Love is what? You care. You are detailed. You are what? You are detailed to the food the person will eat. I changed my wife's dress. That's how detailed I am. I looked at her and said, this is not your size. I went to the shop. I don't shop for myself when I shop before now. I said, this is your size. Well, he said to go to shop. I don't go shop oh, for what? I don't go to shop for my own. I go to shop for my wife. Is it a sin? No. Is it a sin? No. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I enter the shop. I buy her bags. Most of our bags, you see, I buy them. What is it? Am I an old man? No, I'm an old man. I care. Because I, I won't like her to carry a bag that's not fine. So, so if I say she's not looking good, I should look for her. Fit her. You get what I'm saying now? Love, should, love is care. When my pastors are coming for meetings, the first service, I care to ask my pastors. I will care to the food they eat. I say, which food are you giving to them? They tell me, I say, no, I can't give them this kind of food. No way. I, that's how detailed I am. When they, they were to come for a meeting, I will know the food they will eat. I will say, which food are they eating this afternoon? Love is not, love is not preaching. Love is not clapping. Love is it's practical. It's what? It's a universal language that is understood anywhere in the world. Just walk in love. You will not preach too many messages. Crowd will come. Every mega church, they watch the pastor, is a man of love. People are not magnetic. They're only magnetic to lovers. Love is a compelling force. When you walk in love, people just come. You know why you come to this church? Love. When I pray for you, I pray from here. Even when I say, hey, stop that, you know I'm doing it in love. Don't walk in love. You can preach all the messages. People will just walk out. They say, don't matter. They say, God, leave him. And just when they talk, go find money. No, we're going to give you. Now lift your right hand and say, Father, I receive grace to walk in love. I've heard it. I'll put it to practice. I have the Holy Spirit already in me. He has shed love in my heart. I give expression to love for people all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now go and put love to practice.